Hey, Ra. Hey, Ra. Hello, everyone. Hi, uh, before we get started, let's sync up. I'll, uh, I'll sync up so we're on the same page. So we'll cross the right foot over the left. Oh, it's hard to do that. You can just do the ankles. You can just do ankles. And we'll do a yeah. we'll do a hip one for you. That uh, I have this weird chair I'm sitting on that I can sit cross-legged. So there's like, oh, I can move. Oh, that's awesome. All right, I got it. All yeah. right. So right foot over left, right arm under left armpit, left arm over top. Turn the head to the left, upper body to the right, and we'll breathe in three, two, one through the mouth. Two. Three, nose, two, three. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Feels a little bit better. <clears throat> yeah, yes. How How's it you? going? <clears throat> yeah, out of curiosity, uh, when we do that handshake, um, do you do you feel a change yourself? Or yeah, especially today because I wasn't able. I haven't done my facial removers <laughs> removers yeah. yet. Yeah. How's how's the uh, so I saw you started the reset. How's that going? It's going good. Yeah. So I think today's day four, but I have for me. So I think I'm a little bit behind. Yeah. But it's just the three so far on day one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're making it really simple for people, the, right? The reason why is because <clears throat> when, when somebody is adding a new behavior, <clears throat> we want to do it in smaller increments. So to, for someone to take an hour out of their day to do movement, if they already have all their other things going on, is a bit harder. So what we're doing, we're playing a slow game. It's, it's do the first three, then we're adding slowly more and more tools in the box as we go. Um, I mean, this, this 20 day reset theoretically could go for over 90 days, even longer than that. And, and we will be adding more stuff as we go each day, there'll be new movements, new self-care techniques, new, um, podcasts or conversations, stuff like that. So, yeah, no. Yeah. I like it. I'm telling everyone that I can about it too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, so what, what, um, what do you think of it so far in terms of um, like feedback? Is there anything that you you would you would like to see in there, or anything that um, you have questions see. about or don't want to see? So, <clears throat> I've only done three days of the twenty eight day, but uh, I think it's fine, and I like the slowly dripping it to people. So I understand that. I do wonder. And I know it was said that the palette swipe was like usually shifted or the palettes shifted over to the right, but during the 10, the 10 movements, the one I've, I've went through 10, two different 10 day or 10 movement videos. And there's certain things that are not balanced. So I was just wondering mm. why we don't do certain things on both sides which I get it though. Energetically, I understand that there's different energies on different parts of the body, yeah. but having a reason, like, I'm just kind of like in the, in the dark mm -hmm. with why That's a good question. It's a great yeah. question. Well, the palette swipe, um, they, we used to think it was because of gravity and the rotation of the earth that was causing people in the Northern hemisphere to have a tight, it's a, it's a tight um, spot right between the thumb and the pointing finger which I have and, on my right side. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and then people on the, in the Southern hemisphere, it generally was on the left, but we started to change our stance on that a little bit. I think it's either because I think it's, well, Gary was saying the process of digestion is winding the bot, the fascia this way. So yeah, the fascia is always going because digestion is always moving this way. I'm oh, sorry, mm -hmm. this way through the, the belly. So it, it's constantly winding. So in, in the upper zone, we want to counter wind it. And um, again, we've tried different things, but only swiping one way because we have a dominant, the majority of people, if you look at them, they're one eye is higher than the other, right? And, um, and so the, one of the ways to, um, uh, to, to assess, that's, that's showing us that the fascia is not wrapped evenly. And so you think about the, the fascia, 
maybe to describe it a little bit better would be a, a start, the way that we describe it in simple terms. Um, <clears throat> think, think of our bodies as being biotinsegrous. What, what that means is like a balloon. So if I blow into a balloon, uh, the balloon's uh, plastic or rubber expands and it's increasing pressure and it's got uh, outside pressure that matches it. And, um, and imagine that's your skin, right? And there's 14.7 pounds per square inch of pressure here. Because of the air molecules and gravity, <clears throat> it's the body creating that external pressure. Yeah, so there's 14.7 yeah, pounds per square inch yeah. on the human body. And so there's a 14.7 pounds per square inch pushing out, which was one of the first things that I looked at when I <clears throat> got into healthcare. I said, we're basically, um, we're pressurized. And, you know, when I was a young kid diving at 13 years old, I was studying the physics of diving um, and pressure on the body. And I didn't know that that was going to set me up for, to understand how fascia works later on. But we are a pressurized tube, a balloon, and we have three sections, one, <clears throat> two, and then three. And in those sections, there's pressurized relief valves. Like in the, in the pelvic floor area, the re relief valve is the anus, right? And um, in the diaphragm, it has two relief valves, one, uh, one for the esophagus and one for the arteries. Because as the diaphragm moves, it moves, on the, it moves over top of those valves. And then when there's too much pressure, it pulls it up into here. And then this relief pressure from here up is in the ears. And so we treat the body in these three separate areas. And imagine if, if you think of fascia, like we're taught that bones are structure and then muscles go on top of bones. And then we put fascia on top of it, like a coating. Mm -hmm. There's fascia inside the muscle too. And now, mm -hmm. you know, with, with new reporting, they're saying there's fascia inside the bones too. So, you know, when, when that report came out from New York State University in 2017 or 18, talking about <clears throat> fascia and its intelligence, that was just verifying something that we had already known and been using, but it just gave it more, more um, I guess, more texture. It gave us more information about it. So if we take our body as a balloon and inside of it, we put fascia, which is a gel. Call it like, um, <clears throat> kind of like a jello. Like a jello, jello like an yeah. agar. Or a jello. It can be like water <clears throat> and very fluid and, <clears throat> and soft. And then it can be as hard as tensile steel in a second. So it could be anywhere from water to jello to steel. <laughs> so, so imagine, let's just use an analogy. So you got a balloon, <clears throat> it's a skin balloon. It's full of this gel. And inside of it, we take a toothpick and we wrap that toothpick with a rubber band. <clears throat> toothpick being the bone and the rubber band being a muscle. And you put one up for the legs, one for <laughs> the arms, one big one for the spine and a Cholula cap for the head, wooden Cholula cap. And you put that inside there and you, uh, then you put 10 pieces of fruit, you stick it inside that little balloon and, and they're all floating. That's actually how the body works in our view. And, and some ways to, to evidence this or show this was just, you know, was basically just viewing it. Yeah. But now we have physical evidence of it. But the, the point is, is that well, yeah. well, on top of that, what, the, what, what was happening is even when Human Garage was working with fascia, um, at first, they were doing what everybody else was doing, and, and that was to go directly into the muscles and the bones, thinking that they were releasing the fascia. Mm. But that jello is what's holding the muscles, the bones, the organs, and everything else inside. So if I, if I, if I reach in and I move something, the jello pulls it back. Mm. That's what mm -hmm. the chiropractic was doing. It's adjusting the bone, but the jello has the restrictions or the mm. torque patterns that just pulls the bone back in place. Yeah, so you, you think about <clears throat> you think about the body from uh, from you know that point of view, and um, what we're what we're really doing is with the fascia. The fascia is is more intelligent than, than it has a thousand times more nerve endings in the brain, and we we got caught in this trap trying to find what fascia was and what the body was, right? And and there's some basics that just didn't make sense. Like for example, if the bones are structure, like structural structural alignment. If the bones are structured, how come they're not touching? Because if you have a, a roof, a frame, and a house, all the, all the wood's nailed together. But if you're bone on bone in your body, that hurts. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't make sense, right? So the bones aren't structured. So if they're not structured, what are they? And that's what our training program goes into, is what is the relationship of bones in the body? They're reference points for the fascia. Mm -hmm. You know, we've even gone as far as, and you'd have to deep dive in, but, um, but you, simple little analogies, you can... Um, it just doesn't make sense how we even walk. You know, I've used this on podcasts before, but 
if you were to step on a piece of glass, right? And you were to step, it takes a second and a half for that nerve signal to go up to the body, to the brain, to the humiculus, the cerebellum, and then wrap its way back down for motor control. So if I was going to step on a piece of glass, I would be one, 1,000 and then move, but that's not what happens, right? When I step right. on glass, I move right away. So then we explain it with a ganglion reflex, like a doctor hits your knee. Challenge with that is if I stepped on glass, I would, and that ganglion reflex was driving me, I just go boing like a jumping jack, but I don't, I move intelligently to safety. So right. we, our assessment was something was moving faster than the nerve signals because my body moves faster than the sig, uh, is moving to safety faster than that signal even got to the brain. So my body's already moving before the brain knew it happened. And this is when we started saying fascia is really what moves the body. And then the, what is the muscle skeletal system for? It's for safety. Fear. Fear. Fear, safety, protection. Yeah. And so, so we can, what we've learned to do is we can promote anything in the human body that you habituate over time grows or has an effect. So what we're doing is we're habituating the fascial movement and developing the fascia rather than the muscle. Mm -hmm. And it's lighter and it moves faster. Yeah. And in by doing this, it's just giving us incredible range of motion, yeah. very elastic skin, uh, looking younger and stuff like that. So, so part of it is, is working with the intelligence of the body instead of, instead of pushing the body to perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and to, to now answer the question, the fascia doesn't wrap the body evenly. And the way we see it is as a pressurized balloon. So like if, if you stand up, if he's a balloon and I pull or I pinch the balloon here, then what happens? Okay. What, what would happen? Yeah, if you pinch the balloon here, I have to generate pressure this way, drive right. that rib up, driving that rib up. And then the neck has to counterbalance this way. And, and so fascia, you know, we think about muscles don't get tight from the time that we're an adult, um, we're born to the, or sorry, from the time we're an adult to the time we die, the length of the muscle doesn't change shape and muscles are elastic. They stretch to three times their length, but they're constricted by fascia. So in bodybuilding, we try to stretch the fascia to get the muscle bigger. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it works. But we just found that there's a, that there's a better way. Mm -hmm. and, and so those, those tiny little restrictions in the body pull the body one way and the body has to drive up against it another way. So I, I think we don't, we don't know why you only, the palate constantly wants to go to the right. We have theories about it. Um, one of mine is just, or the, one of the ways I look at it is most people are right-handed. And right. so using the right side of the body more, we're, we're creating more tension on this side, which is why this is tighter, which then pulls this that way. But at the overall wrong yeah. is Sasha, think of the body, we're made of DNA. So if you were to build a house out of Lego and you stand back far enough, it looked like solid plastic. Mm -hmm. As you move in closer, you'd see the Lego components, right? So if we're built of DNA, if you get in close enough or large enough, you should be able to see the shape of a DNA. It's all spinning, right? Yeah, so we're so the DNA, we're three sections, right? Section number one, section number two, pressure section, and then section number three. And those three, the fascia wraps unevenly. So it's like a D, like a swirl. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. And it comes to the top. And since we have behaviors that are in our society that are symmetrical. Which, that are symmetrical, yeah. um, it, causes, it causes non-symmetry non in, in the way that the body moves. You know, like one of the things that we can do, uh, we'll show you one of, our, one of the chiropractors that we have in the Netherlands, he developed a whole process to release the neck. We can show you today online. And it actually, will, it actually moves the eye up and down where it sits mm -hmm. because we're not wrapped even. Yeah. And that's why we do it unevenly. And, and, that's, and the movements themselves oh, those are the 10 basic movements but they are they can be adapted and our whole point is to teach people how we thought about it how we made it so they can interpret it because for example you know like we do swinger both ways like this right mm -hmm. but if i'm hitting a racket like this if i hit a racket like this you know a thousand times a day like a tennis player or a baseball player one side of me is going to be compressed and one side is going to be elongated Right. So what I played I, hockey. So right, yeah. hockey. Yeah. There you go. So what? So what I would do 
if I'm right-handed, this is my normal wind-up stretch. So what I would do is I would stretch the other side more often to bring back balance because we're doing an unbalanced practice. So, so the movements are meant to be adapted and the 10 basic movements basically mobilize the fascia around all the joints because we feel that the body moves fascially and it moves through the joints and then notifies the muscle skeletal system to defend it if it, if it doesn't get what it wants. A good example is, imagine rather you're walking and then you're, you miss a curb, like a little lip. You've ever done that before? Yeah. And then when you're walking, you miss a lip and you, oh, and the whole thing, the whole side tightens up, right? And the reason why that happens is because your knee goes bone on bone. And when bones touch in organic setting, their bio, uh, bones are biodiastic. So when they touch an organic setting, they create a spark. That spark is the fire of life that we get. That's why the only bones that really touch in the body are in the rib cage, the teeth and the ears, because those are sparking power. Every time we breathe, that's the power. And then when we fire the endocrine system, the hormones that draws that power, that's when we digest food and process. So we just, we, we took a look at not what science said or what education said about body. We said, this is what we see working and we just, worked on what was working over 10 years and what came out of it was a whole new way to think about the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have, uh, questions. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, to add on to that, that was one of my questions. The other, another one is if fascia has the intelligence or it is an intelligence, what's the, What's like the digestible way to explain, to explain communication? Is it just intelligent within our body or if it's, if it's working with, uh, bioluminescence or what did you say? Biophotonic. Yeah. yeah so what you're asking, so the, the fascia is biophotonic. So it's photons, it's light, it's right. bioacoustic harmonic. That's why it vibrates. And vibration, like the ear is mostly fascia, <clears throat> vibration goes in and vibrates the bones. Here, here's actually a cool, um, a cool video there. I'll pull up real quick. Um, it's water frequency. So this is actually was super helpful mm. for in our understanding of fascia. Um, the, uh... It's the frequency of water as it changes. So, so we, we have to kind of... Is, is it... Well, we're, we're, we'll go a little bit here. Yeah, we'll have to like kind of set you up for the way that we think, and then it'll make a bit more sense. So here's here's water coming down a tap, right? And they're vibrating it at different frequencies. Go reverse. And these frequencies are different forms of communication, different forms of information, different uh, forms of movement. Because the fascia does this; it vibrates at these frequencies. And so. So right. Watch this, uh, Rock. We're actually going to change, reverse the frequency here. Watch this. It goes upwards. Right. So, so if you think about it this way, one of the ways that we we looked at the body is we 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 broke it down into components, and we said, okay, because there's no one's really got science on what does frequency and waves. I mean, we got we got a lot of fringe science on on how it works, but basically. If you think about it, we're 70% water, we're 25% silica and 5% bacteria and viruses and everything else. So we're basically sand and water is our primary construction. And sand has a magnetic pull. So it's pulled to gravity. It's, it, it has minerals, right? And silica, minerals pulling down. So gravity pulls us the sand in us or the bones in us down and then, and the muscles in us down and then electricity or thoughts, the field, is what pulls the water up, which like we just in that saw in that video. Way. Yeah, and that's the and that that's the way that we see a human being walks or stands. Mm -hmm. You know, from a from an energetic or from a photonic point of view. If that makes sense to you, yeah. right? So the frequency is what you like. Jason was saying there's it's it's jelly. It's stiff or it could be liquid, like the frequency could be what's controlling yeah, that. It is. It is. State of being, right? So if, I, if I'm really angry, 
and I yelled at you, boom, if that frequency hits your fascia, that water, and it starts to vibrate at a specific frequency. That's why so that's, yeah, go on. So that's where my question is, is, or not question, but just my, my consideration here is, is how is fascia communicate if, if it's photonic, and everything on this entire physical reality is is photonic, right? It's all stored sunlight. It's everything's made from sunlight. Yeah, which makes right, it yes, which makes right, it weird. Right. Yeah. Which makes it weird why we we consider that we're not. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like how could we, we be to- every, the whole universe is <laughs> follows these rules, but mankind we stand alone. <laughs> so then is fascia so then that's the answer, right? Like it's the the intelligence to connect with everything is is in the fascia i mean i guess it's it's we're a like, critical actually, component. we're like a tuning fork right it's like a tuning right fork. we vibrate and we have frequency it would be though saying you know like raise your frequency i mean people talk about it all day long but raising your frequency has a lot more to do with talking and meditation it's also in the body because yeah, it's the emotional body, yeah the body's a, emotional the body exactly. is the body is is literally um, a computer. The brain is just a CPU. It's running programs. So now, now we're back. We're up to emotions and yeah. And so yeah, exactly. We're, we're this is where she gets in. Is this why we work as a team? It's because you know the, the thought that 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 um, a thought moves us is not just doesn't check out because before I want to if I want to get a glass of water, I have to have a desire first, an emotion. So the emotion gets triggers the the brain the emotion is felt in the body the way we see it it triggers the brain creates a thought i need water i want water and desire the body says i request water so there's a desire then i get up where's the water i go over i grab it move it drink it so so between we you know emotion is what moves us emotion and for us to not consider that you know um it is just crazy but on the flip side of that is that at the top level of Olympic sports and top level athletes, we're not making them run faster. We're getting them to emote faster. We're getting, you know, all running programs. I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I, I fear um, being left alone or abandoned. All those thoughts are the ones that trigger at the moment they need it. Those are the ones that have to go. It's emotions that we're working with. And when we started figuring that out, it was like, it doesn't matter if we work on the physical body. If we're not working on the emotions, then it's coming back. Because if you're angry, right? What does angry look like? Angry is like, Ur. that's the liver emerging all through here and coming up through here. It's all pulling in. And, and if I hold that anger, I'm not, or fear in my body, I'm not, my body's not at ease, right? And that's the beginning of disease. You hold that long enough, eventually somebody's going to be able to measure it. Because over like that, you're going to have upper back, upper thoracic issues, mm-hmm. mid thoracic up from T6 up. You're going to have issues with your lungs not being able to fire liver. properly. Mm-hmm. You're going to have liver issues because you can't uh, methylate and respirate properly. Mm-hmm. So this is where disease comes from. And being a clinical practice, and I wasn't a clinician, I came in, I looked at all this, this stuff and I looked at it from an eye. I didn't, wasn't trained by, by academia about medicine. I was trained by touching people and talking to practitioners who touch people for a living and have done it for 20, 30 years. And, and so it just developed this, this set of questions that, that I had that we were trying to resolve. And then all that being put aside was, you know, was when I, when I realized that, that I wasn't fix, fixing people, wasn't really helping. It was just putting big band-aids on people. And the, the primary driver was if we couldn't get people to do something themselves, like think about you come to the human garage, like you came to in Venice, you, if you're on a full program, you're there for 3% of your week, 97% of the week, you're somewhere else doing something else. So if your daily habits are even just slightly not in line with, with what your body needs or wants, there's no possible way that you're going to heal. And so we would ask people to take 10 or 15 minutes and do one thing for themselves. And they'll come in and a week later and say, oh, you know, I did it once or twice. I'm like, listen, you have a serious medical condition where your body needs to de-stress need you to do this every day and they wouldn't do it. So I realized that we're, people were coming to get fixed and that was a wrong mechanism to start to try to apply things to them because they already think they're broken and they think that somebody has to take care of them. So once we empower people with the ability to just take care of themselves, 
then they then they're in the daily routine of doing it. And if they need extra help, when we help them, we're assisting them rather than fixing them, which is yeah. part of your journey because that's how you found us, right? You were you just need a little bit of fix it. Yeah, but there's other so like muscle testing, mm-hmm. right? Like there's a Dr. David Hawkins. Yeah. He's 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 basically his work shows that through muscle testing, we can get all the answers of the universe. Yes. And so we use that implicitly. We call it tuning in. But the, the, re- the reason why is, is we see fascia is act, actually the physical body is, is like the asshole of the fascia, literally. Because the fascia that we've got, or sorry, the aura, the aura is in front of us. And then boom, the, body, the physical body is at a frequency that we can actually see with the eyes. Yeah. It's fascia is an extension of the aura and and what it is is the the different frequencies that are around us we can tune into and pick up information yeah it, it's really simple yeah. if you think about it in really really like grade five level everything in the world has has photons and energy so mm-hmm. so the so we have to have a field around us and we know that it's people who argue that i mean we have equipment now that test the photons you put your finger in it test your photonic field and it shows where your chakras as the scientific equipment we so, have pictures yeah we have pictures of it too <laughs> so 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 we can we can test the field today so it's crazy to think that 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 somehow how is it connected to us is it just is it just air that follows us around you know like we're part of it <laughs> it's it's like yeah. and, and and some people's field is bigger you know even when they're really angry they walk into a room and you can feel it mm-hmm. Or when they're when they're just magnetic and charge in charge of life and in the zone in the flow, and so what it is what we found is that the restrictions in the fascia because the fascia carries the intelligence and through the fascia is the meridian lines which is the emotional components that those emotions emoting are we can expand our field by opening up the layers of fascia and that's what that's what we've done for ourselves and that's what we saw and. Ra, the, the one thing that I'm going to tell you, because there's a lot of questions in, in me about how the body worked. And, and we, we went on a crazy journey uh, this year that clarified everything. So the three of us, we went 44 days without eating food. Mm-hmm. And we went two weeks without drinking water. And right. we were, we were uh, hiking and climbing and going to lakes every day, every single day for those for the 44 days. And we're doing a normal, normal routine. And after, you know, three or four weeks when nothing's in your body, you, you start to lose the belief that the food is actually a fuel. The food isn't a fuel. It's a medication. But if I take too much of it or the wrong medication, it becomes a drug. Mm-hmm. And so we started realizing that that drugs weren't drugs. Food was drugs. Everything that came in the body was a drug. Breath is a drug because it creates a, it creates an effect. If I breathe, I can create adrenaline and noradrenaline i can create uh, serotonin oxytocin so the breath is a drug so everything that comes in the body is either is either a medicine or a drug and then we started re-looking at what we use like plant medicines and and foods and how do we use them because we made a decision to come back and eat we didn't we didn't need to eat and we we documented the whole journey including the crazy stuff like you know like you don't take a you don't have a bowel movement for three weeks and then you take some chlorophyll and the next day we had a bowel movement and we're like it was weird not having one for three weeks, but it's even weirder when something came out after three weeks. So, yeah. so we use that as a baseline to get a new understanding of the body. So if food wasn't a fuel, then what is it? How does it work? How do we apply it? And then what we noticed was this. My mother transitioned or passed away um, during the fast and the fourth week of the fast. And when I heard the news, I had zero emotion to it. It's like, oh, yeah. Uh, wow. That's too bad. We're going to have to take care of that. You know, that, I mean, I don't, I'm not being facetious. That's literally my demeanor. And we have it on film too. Because yeah. Yeah. So because we you didn't we, drop into grief. Yeah. And, yeah. and so when we added the food back in, guess what came in? The emotions. And then I was crying. Then it was like, oh, sobbing and stuff like that. And it's really because the food is what fires the endocrine system, uh, which then triggers the emotions and pushes them up. And and so it was, it, was a, it was a really wild experiment, but it, something wasn't right with the human body. We didn't like the answers we were getting. We didn't have the bodies or the lives that we wanted. 
And so something radical needed to change. And what we did is we, we decided to prove one thing, either true or false about food. We don't really need food. So then what is it for? And then that was, that was our journey. And part of this will be in a book that's coming out or in pieces you'll see, but we have documented it, including pictures and all kinds of weird stuff. But that just, that just codified a whole bunch of things that we thought about the body and then opened up a whole new uh, set of ideas about, well, if that's not true, then what else isn't true? What else is true? And we just started testing. So we're just like a human lab. We've been, we started the maneuvers uh, a year ago. We started the fast about six months ago, four months three, four months, three, ago. Uh, four months ago. Yeah. And then, and, and it's just been part of a journey. And then we've had uh, brain mechanics come in here and put science on it, like test us, so test our brains, uh, uh, our flows, test yeah, our photonic yeah. fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything. Cause, cause um, to, to go back to, that was a, uh, your question. Your question. <laughs> um, fascia has a connection to the subconscious. And the subconscious has a connection to that Kashuk records. Mm -hmm. Some people like to call it, right? <clears throat> and each person has certain channels that they subscribe to. Like I subscribe to um, sports and, and I like health and I like all these different things. So I'm getting information about that all day in my body and I'm perceiving it with my mind. <clears throat> so the, the subconscious is the fascia. It is the aura. And that, that information, we can everybody has the innate ability to access and use. But what's happening is well, I was in so much stress in my body that my body would receive a signal, but it, I couldn't perceive it. My body was too compressed. It had too many toxins. So I was losing the connection with my subconscious. <clears throat> yeah. Is there... So... Fascia or the signals that fascia receives should, according to what we're talking about, be able to extend into other dimensions, like transcend time even. Absolutely. We, you know, then, we, we believe that. And, and I guess this a belief and we have areas where we've demonstrated it and you'd have to be there to see it. Mm -hmm. And so people who believe it and want to try it. Yes. You can actually, we can actually feel it. Yeah. And so, What's the route from when uh, like spermenters egg and then those cells start to form? Where, w where does the fascia emerge from? That's, that's like, I would be interested because that would help me explain how we go from self to aura to universe. If we know where fascia actually emerges from, like which cells, how does it actually get mapped? And then what's the map from our body? Like, does it, does it, how does it connect to our skin and our hair? Is that technically fascia? Uh, like where does the fascia end in our physical body? Like, where does it, like, that's, is there? That's, that's that a, actually that's a, has two answers. It's good. Yeah. And, and, and those two answers bring up lots of questions and I'll preface it with this. The more I learn about the human body and fascia, the, the more I realize I don't know anything. Right. And, and so, so part of our journey, we'll answer this last question on this, but part of our journey was our generation wants to know what's inside a phone or a computer. We don't know what chip and what processor their generation doesn't really care. They just want to know how to use it. So we've been trying to figure out what's inside the body. And, and we're going to, I believe that we're going to debate this until, until the end of time and how it works because we're learning new things always. And, but what we are experts in now is how to program it, how it works and how to use it. And that's more important because the debate on, because we're going to be talking about this and then two years, we're going to discover something else and it's going to completely unwind everything that we just said. So, so we're going to put our energy into helping people use it and less energy into helping them understand it. But to put that in, in the, one of the ways to, to bring around my belief system, I looked at a couple of things, indigenous medicine, Indigenous cultures, um, pra uh, practices, indigenous beliefs, spiritual beliefs, and then also looked at embryology. You know, it's what we believe um, and about how we're created and our creation. And in embryology, what happens is sperm hits the egg and basically it creates a little, little ball of plasma. That ball of plasma, I believe, is a fascia. We call it fascia. And inside that, the baby starts growing. But what's happening is the baby, when it starts to grow at first, has two nerve clusters. One, um, one is intrinsic, one's extrinsic nervous system, little, 
little nerve clusters with a line in between them. That, that's your, one of them becomes your brain and one of them becomes your stomach, but we don't know which one. And that's why the, the gut is not the second brain. It's actually the brain. It's the same. Mm-hmm. Brain. That's why depression is here. And we believe and we, we demonstrate on a regular basis. So the idea is, is that as the muscle skeletal system starts growing, it grows inside that ball of plasma. And then in the third month, the organs uh, start to form somewhere around the third month. But the organs grow outside the baby, outside here. And, and the meridian lines grow into the baby, but the organs grow outside. And what happens is in the third trimester, the organs go inside the, the anus and they come up inside the body, but it's still inside the plasma, which was the fascia. Because we're basically made of fascia, because if you think about it, how can we get fascia around a muscle? And it's inside the muscle, but it's one complete sheet. We're made of it. Think of fascia instead of a tissue, think of it as a liquid that's really smart and gets really hard and has structure when it needs to. And if we think about it that way, then it recontextualizes that question because there are three, and there's, there, you know, there's, we have beliefs on how the body's made. We teach that in our program. We, how do you build a human? What are the components? Because we, at some point, irrespective of our belief system, we're living in a fluid adaptive biological computer. That's it. Somehow some consciousness or some soul enters there. Don't want to argue about that. I mean, we can talk about it, but and anyway, I have my beliefs and other people have beliefs, but at, somehow there's an observer or something that enters here and makes us work and learns. And somehow it has interactions with other parts like past lives, because we have you know, fears that we don't know. Like when I was five years old, I saw a coffin and freaked out, but I didn't have TV. I never saw a coffin. What triggered that response? It had to have been something else. So, so with these questions we were trying to answer. And again, we come back to the point where as we're, our journey now is to stop really figuring it out. What we're doing is figuring out, putting our energy, how to use it and how to work it, how to help people feel better and work and move and live and, and move younger in their bodies. Yeah. And then the other side of that is, is the figuring out will keep up with it, but we're learning to use it faster than the figuring out is. So like the cool things that you're starting to do. Yeah. So the figuring out, it seems that the next evolution of, of the human being is being able to communicate with each other Which emotionally first. And then, and then through, through the, through the mind second. Well, we did that so, with you the other day. We, we did it. We did some work with you on that, that video and you felt the work that's using the field. It doesn't matter how far I am. If I'm an energy worker right. and, I, and I can touch you and pr- produce energy, I can produce energy from here, but I can also yeah. produce it from across the planet. It's all about intention. Yeah. Yeah. Intention is, is one of the, is literally when working with the human body, if you have the right intentions behind what, what I'm doing, it'll have the right effect. And so we play around with this. Like I know my thoughts, I know my body. And when someone comes into the room, all of a sudden, if my thoughts start switching to negative, I have an idea that the person that came in is unbalanced and they're weighing towards the negative. That's either the, the direction of their thoughts or their, their, their state of being at that, at that current moment. So we, we're, we're playing around with this all the time. And I'm saying, hey, did you think this? Or did you feel this? And we're constantly checking with each other to say, hey, to understand the body feels and then we interpret it and, and the body has a language. So what, what we're doing is when I feel something, I ask them to get reference. Did, did you think yeah. this? Did you say this? Yeah. Did you, you feel, feel this? Did you, yeah. did you judge someone right now? Yeah. Because I, when I feel it in my body, I'm now creating a book to understand what my body's telling me. Yeah. There's, the just, there's just no, there, I mean, there are lots of texts out there, ancient texts that talk about this, but they also talk about it in a context that we're not able to understand. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Yeah, like we read those texts, and but we read it in the colloquial language. Can you imagine 3,000 years from now, you know, people, uh, they're looking at California and say, they, gag me with a spoon. They used to gag people with spoons. You know, it's like the, the, the colloquial language doesn't translate to the full understanding. And we've lost that. So we can study those texts all we want, but we didn't live in the time. We don't know the idioms of how they spoke. That's why, that's why they only were a reference point for us. Because we had to learn it in our language, the way we explain it, the way science talks about it today, so that we can communicate it and share it with others. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm saying things like, 
Um, when I'm using esoteric terms or terms from yoga or Sanskrit or stuff like that, they're all true because it, it's, it's the human body. It's just that all those things is validated. If it works, it's just validating the truth. So all of those religions, all of those thought processes, at some point they're true. Otherwise they wouldn't be around. And that's why we said we accept everything. But what we're doing is taking all that truth now and, and we're experimenting with it. Apply it. Yeah, to apply yeah. it to your daily life. And yeah. then we're, at, we're, we're looking for new ways to explain to people. Yeah. Like a, an exercise I would do is uh, if I was meeting up with somebody and I, and I was early, I'd close my eyes and I would feel my body. And if I felt a specific change, I would look around and see if they got there. And, and I, at first I'd have a feeling I'd look around, they weren't there. Then I'd close my eyes, I'd have a feeling, look around, they weren't there. And then I'd do it and then they were. And then I continued to do that with people. And, I, and it would be the same sensation in my body was with when a friend of mine arrived in my space. Mm -hmm. And so what I was doing is I was starting to take my attention off of my, what I could see and what I could think and rather just feel it because I can feel my friend come. And now it's to the point when people are coming to our house, the three of us are like, they're here. And they haven't even pulled into the driveway yet. They're literally just up there, up the road. But, yeah, but so part of it... Dogs can sense that as well. Dogs, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogs. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? So exactly. yeah. So the, the the part about it is is that you know we moved up to Lions Bay originally to set up a retreat center and to host people and help them you know rehab, recover their bodies, move younger, kind of like a like a like a really VIP retreat. But with COVID happening and that, we ended up living and working here. But we're isolated. We're like we're like up to the mountains. And so we have nobody around. So we have a very, and we have very little electrostatic uh, electromagnetic ra radiation. We would not have been able to do this if we we're in the city. Mm -hmm. So, so part of it was we were isolated. So we had a contained experiment. We had the ability to measure things. And we even had things like EEGs on us, you know, helmets with brain scans yes. and, and looking at different frequencies and responses when we're moving and stuff like that because in, in a city we've got like you've got literally 5g going through you you've got emfs and you got dirty energy and it's affecting us well, and when they did the brain scan we have uh, perfectly balanced brains and the, the gentleman who did it from brain mechanics uh kareem delgado he said uh you have the brains of tibetan monks except mm -hmm. for mine wasn't unbalanced yeah. yes mine, was, mine was awful. mostly all gamma <laughs> Which, which means that I'm, that I'm like in a dream state all the time. And that's part of what our practice is. It's basically, we believe that when we remove this stress daily over a long period of time, that the body starts to heal itself. It's made to heal itself. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it doesn't is because we have inputs of stressors that are all day long coming at us. The, the, the city we live in, the, the relationships, our taxes, our jobs, the chemical stressors. Yeah. And this is why, it, what, uh, what our answer was, Rob, we were trying to fix this, but we came into nature as an accident. So I wasn't a naturist, <laughs> but you see us now, it's like, I've, I've been watching you for years and, and you, you know so much about nature and we're learning that right now, but we became that because our bodies wanted to do more. It wasn't, we didn't force ourselves into nature. Now it's like our bodies need the nature and we need to get there. Yeah. Have you guys, so like you were talking about feelings transmitted between you, have you extended that to like trees? Have yes, you... yes, yes. Yeah, we, we've been playing around with nature in the sense that we'll, we'll change our frequency and then nature will come to us. Mm. And, yeah. and, and it will it'll hang out with us rather than be scared. We've got bears in our in our yard. Actually. Yeah, like, like, literally. Like, yeah, we got pictures of dancing bears in our yard. But but we we'll have mice. We'll have um, birds. We'll have chipmunks. We'll have snakes. We'll have lizards. All come up to us and say hi. Like like and and when we're not in a good in a good state or we're unbalanced or our frequencies off, they get scared and scattered. So we've been playing around with that of of connecting with with a rock or with a tree or with the water, the ocean or different animals. Because the frequency that we sit at impacts everything around us. And that's why we sync up. Because we're, we're bringing everybody's frequency to one state. Every emotion has a frequency. Every thought has a frequency. And so all of these collective frequencies create the sum of, the sum of it, it becomes me. And, and so what we've noticed is as, as we started taking care of ourselves, our frequency raised to such a high point that when we sync with people, their body starts to heal. Mm-hmm. 
just in this pure sinking together as a group, we all actually elevate and heal. And that's what we, we started to notice this because people would come to a, a class, like an outdoor class we were doing for free. And the results of that outdoor class or even an online class, they would, online. they would notice that they would have more dramatic results in their bodies um, when they did it with other people, even online. Mm -hmm. And that's just because we believe it's frequencies it's, amplify yeah, when they're together. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this journey really has been about, I, I guess over the last couple months for myself in particular, but I know they've been playing around with it is, is, is tuning into my body. Cause I spent most of my, my life in my head and I, most of my focus and attention is up here, not here. So now I consciously go pull my attention to my heart pull my attention to my solar plexus, pull my attention to my root. And then I feel for changes around me. And so I'll feel a change in my body in one of those areas. And then I'll look around and then get confirmation of that, of that, what that means. But this, starting to create a language of my body. This, but this, mm -hmm. this, um, that's what psychics are. Yeah. This is yeah. what, yeah. what, what happened for us though, is we had to have a controlled environment to learn it. Yeah. But once we've learned it, we can teach it to other people. Yeah. And because in, in our daily lives, there's too much interactions with people, with energies, things like that. We're pinging all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it was a controlled environment that allowed us to learn. And, and we're, not, we're not pretending we know everything. We're, we're at the beginning of this journey, for sure. Like yeah. we're just starting to understand. Yeah. And I, I believe that that's what psychics are really doing is they, they're able to read their body. Mm -hmm. They're able to understand what the signals of the body are. Because the body gets vibrations, it gets the feel. Mm -hmm. And then we have to associate that feeling of what it means. We have to interpret it. And so that's really what we're playing around with is we're going in nature and feeling what that frequency is like. We actually, we climbed, uh, we climbed the waterfalls with a seven-year-old girl and, and, and her frequency, the frequency of a child is unbelievable because they're conscious. Yes. And so when we when just climbing with them, I was in a flow state like never before. And I get in a flow state and I, and I thought at first I was like, oh yeah, we'll show, we'll show her how to move on the rocks. No, she's showing us and we're following her it, and the frequency she brings us into is unbelievable in what we can do in our bodies. It's interesting too, uh, Rob, because what, what we're doing is following her and I'm asking her, why did you pick this way? Not that way. And, and I'm watching how I'm learning how her body intuitively makes decisions. Mm -hmm. And then, and then what I do is I follow the decision and then, then I'll, then I'll ask her, I'll go, why didn't you go this way? No, I don't want to. And, and then I'll go that way to see. And intuitively the child just knew the right way to go and the easiest, the easiest way to, to climb and go down. And we've been running experiments like this because at some point, um, you know, when children come into this world, they're completely conscious and we train them with rules to be unconscious, you know, and part of what you're doing is connecting people back to nature, bringing back our consciousness or our, ch our child knows. Yeah. And so if we're going to learn that the, 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 the best thing I've learned about human mechanics is watching babies and understanding them. And I put a, in the app, if you want, there's a, there's a, we, uh, under the, uh, in our app under the 10, uh, basic uh, central fascia maneuvers. There's a bunch of articles in there. One is movement disorders in. Uh, it says crossed out. It says, oh, that's in the that's in the 28 day left reset. Oh, it's in the 28 day left yeah. reset. So it's, it's on day four. It's on day four. So you'll yeah. be able to read it because what because it's how we how we got to these points was like really looking at children's movement and looking at indigenous movement and saying you know like they didn't have the disease and the things we have. What is it about their movement processes and their lives work and how can we integrate that into our lives today? Because Squatting was the biggest one and we don't squat and people can't squat. You know that. And, but getting people to squat is rather difficult uh, just because it, the pain of doing it. And so we had to find ways to get the average person into daily routines that would lead them towards the, the best behavior. There's a, so babies don't really understand that they're separate from from reality right they, they're they're first five years not at all yeah. Yeah, first five years their brain literally is in a dream yeah, yeah so if if fascia is sort of a, a brain ish then or if we just take our senses right there's ways to look at things and i think that that society in in western world has has a very masculine take on things that we penetrate into reality and we take action and and we move reality but 
the how you guys are speaking and how I receive and listen and feel nature is I really have to to get into more of a receptive like receiving feminine where I'm I'm open to energies coming into me as opposed to me manipulating reality let reality come into me and and it and I do feel that like it's a body wide thing and if you imagine like the fascia just being like this web it seems like it'd be the perfect receiver for signals as opposed to like something like our ears or our eyes uh that are just measuring a small frequency of the physical reality well, well there's back a... to your, your question about uh where fascia where does it start it's infinite and right so it starts with consciousness so <clears throat> it winds back to everything being conscious right Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's at some point, at, at some point, the the idea of where it starts and where it ends is is a mute point. I mean, basically, we're on the planet Earth, we're in a big fishbowl. Everything in that fishbowl was created in this fishbowl. So we're a part of all of it. Right. And, and um, a fish doesn't and we're just different layers. I mean, some some birds and animals live really high in the air. Some of them live uh, at, you know, on the mountains, some of them live at sea level. Some of them live below sea level at different levels. And each one of those uh, beings, like in the sea, is acc- uh, acclimated to that level. And if you bring it up, to, like somebody from the Mariana Trench, you bring a, a, a creature up from you know, 7,000 feet and, or, seven, or six, six miles down, you bring it up to 1,000 feet, it's not going to live. Right. And so, so part of it is, <clears throat> is that, is that we're, we're part of that cycle. And and you talk about feminine energy. Well, yeah. the body has a is basically a component of, of information. Shoulders, your right side is masculine in this world, left side is feminine, and uh, thoughts and emotions. So what happens is the fascia, if it's compressed with, through stress, think of fascia like a fetal pastry. And, and in between the fetal pastry, like baklava, you got honey and oil, and that's all the good stuff. But if fascia is stressed, it compresses. And there's no oil or good stuff going through and we're, and our bodies are compressed. And, and so to be more specific, if we have more compression on one side of our body than the other, it's, it's affecting how that information is received. And I receive information from the feminine side, you know, and this is why we also put, you know, bands on and Kabbalah, they put the string on and we have real evidence that it does work. That the Kabbalah string does block energy, but it also blocks everything else. Yeah. And so part of it is, yeah, part of it is, you know, what I fear, I get more of what, what I, and what I push against, I get more of in this universe. So if I fear someone's judgment or bad energy, I'm going to get more of it, you know, because I came in, I wasn't an energy worker. I wasn't a body worker. And they're saying, I got to protect people from the energy. And I just know that what I, what I fear, I get more of. So just the whole fact that I'm protecting myself from somebody means I'm getting it. So we're just, you know, shifting the whole focus and saying, that doesn't make sense. We have to be open and flowing and we have to find ways to let that energy flow through us if i'm trying to block it it's coming at me 10 times hard and this is you know again part of the journey this is this coming in because i didn't come into this i didn't even think about energy as a way of working with the human body until about 2017 i, th- I thought basically mechanics and brain function and brain tells body and that's how it works and the muscle skeletal uh, current way of looking at the body both allopathically um, and, and neurologically. So this was something that came, that came on later and it came on through experience. Like we felt something and I had to explain why I felt it. It wasn't like I had an idea. I didn't believe anything until I felt it kind of. Mm -hmm. And, And so when I felt it, then I had to explain how I felt it, why I felt it, why it was different. And that's what led to, you know, what we're talking about now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, this is, this is resonant with a lot of ancient, like you said, indigenous and and ancient philosophy. It's, it, it helps explain a lot. And I, and you, you were mentioning that some of these languages, the language they use is, is different than the language that we use now. And there's a book, it's called, uh, the emergence of consciousness and the breakdown of the bicameral mind, I think is the title of it. And basically explains that like, there's a time when our brain operated differently than it does now. 
a couple thousand years ago, the two hemispheres weren't really communicating and everyone was essentially schizophrenic or what we classify as schizophrenic now. And they hear voices in their heads. And that's what all these stories of gods and, and this God said something to me. And, and it's basically their brain talking to them, but they didn't really understand consciousness or, or they weren't conscious. And then that fusion happened. And now we can get thoughts in our head and we think that it's us but I mean, I'm not sure if that's even true. That we, thought we, could. We're right there. We yeah. we don't we don't think we perceive. Mm-hmm. Nothing that sits in a chair thinks. Yeah, we 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 perceive, and right, and Absolutely. we give ourselves we give ourselves way too much credit to think that we think. So one of the things that happens as we increase our frequency, and we're doing it. I believe there's other ways, but the body has to go too. And we're not saying it's the other way, but our way was reducing the restriction, the fascia, reducing the stress, increasing our ability to feel. We increase our frequency and when our frequency goes up we sense and we feel and we hear things but what we're getting is we're getting that information that's you know that the u.s patent office you know why it was developed is because they already knew that two people when they get the, they always get the idea at the same time they just want to know yeah. which first and so the idea is like minutes apart right and so it's the idea is means that two people once one person in consciousness achieves a frequency somebody else achieves that same one as a polar has to be a problem and a solution finding itself that's that's consciousness so so that means that every idea once it's perceived by one person somebody else has perceived it at least one person and and we believe that as we raise our frequency and we do it through unrestricting the fascia becoming more aware understanding how our emotions and our thoughts and perceptions interact with our body that we then gain the information so it's not like I'm not studying on the human body. I haven't looked at one book in, in years. I haven't looked at one article. What we're doing is we're taking stuff and then we're having ideas that come in and then we're experimenting. And using it in your daily life for everything. Yes. Getting gas, going to the grocery store, um, having sex, uh, whatever we're doing. Um, you get into you a use flow. it in your... Yeah. If you get 24 into, seven all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you're in the flow. Well, we, we do that stuff in the flow. Yeah. And that's why we don't have to read because in the flow, the body receives all the information we want. And then we get, and then when we need it, it's there. Yeah. And it's, and that's, that's, I mean, Jason was the first person to really fully adapt, uh, adopt my work, but cause he, he didn't learn the work. He, he, Jason moved in with us. And he lived with us every day, 24 seven, every day for a year, he mimicked, felt copied, and then translated the way he learned it. And that became our training program because for years, I've been trying to get people to see the the way I saw it and they didn't. And that's why I wasn't able to reproduce it. And And he had to unwind a lot of learning that he'd had in his mm -hmm. life too. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I was in a unique position for my age to have experienced what I had experienced and then now have complete contrast and how to get there. I have a ladder of tools that I use to reconnect with myself. That, that, that I mean, my tools, but other people have their own. And, and I think that, that we all are helping each other, right? And I, and I think just trying things and then, and then we feel it and then we talk about it. Yeah. And then we, because then we, we don't know why. The, theory, the theories will always change. We just experiment, we feel it, we, we have personal experiences with it. And then we, we download information about why and we, we have those conversations. Yeah. And, and yeah. then, you know, quite honestly, uh, it's like, we'll have, we'll have these thoughts. And then, and then all of a sudden somebody we're talking to, we'll have this perception and somebody we're talking to will come up with a piece of information. I'm like, that's the one thing I needed to hear. And it, it jumps the conversation. So what we're saying is we can't learn it from books now. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing in the books are really helping us. They're, they're informing what we're experiencing, but we're in the process of experiencing this rather than educating ourselves about it. And, and there's a fine line between that, right? And we built our lives so that we could do that. Yeah, and it can be as simple as me thinking, oh, I really like a bowl of cereal or something. And Jason brings it. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. it, it gets down. Yeah, yeah, it, it gets a little weird. It and, and it happens. So it gets, I'm cold and <laughs> they cover me up with a blanket. I don't so, say anything. So yeah, it's, 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 it's funny yeah. because we're here and we just interact. We don't think about it. Then when people come into our space, like we have our coaches and people that come in and we're family. working with, sometimes family, and they look at us like it's really weird because we're like doing stuff without communicating physically. And again, this is a control. This is like we've been in Big Brother 
uh, house for like the last over a year. And, and we have all this, we, so it's a contained space. It's like, it's like a experiment really. And we only go into town once in a while. I think that's all interesting and cord, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, uh, observing how animals communicate and even stories of extraterrestrials or, or interdimensional beings and how they communicate would be interesting to like match up how, how this is evolving, because I mean, we are at a stage of evolution in these physical bodies and there's, there's other spectrums that we can reach into. So Oh, here's, I mean, one, here's one for you. Yes, that's, that's absolutely right. You think about it this way, right? Language itself came from grunts and groans. Because right. before language, I intuitively knew you wanted to eat. So we had all the communication. Before and the back. We and then we started putting words to it. And then we'd start dividing the words. And but everyone, if you look at, at language. If you say like primary words, like I love you, hello, uh, help, and stuff like that, in every language, even though they have a different tone, when you look at the, the resonant frequency of the word, it's the same pattern. Yeah. Even if it's like completely different languages. So, so in other words, language has made us dumb. And, and so I'm, and just a rule, I'm not going to get smarter from reading dumb language. I'm going to get smarter from experiencing it and then trying to put language to associate it. Mm -hmm. and that's, that was my journey because I used to study everything. And when I stopped studying everything, actually, my, and I started experiencing it, my, my learning or my understanding. And you'll pull the information you need to that. It's almost a validation, right? Like you. Yeah, exactly. That's what, that's our point. If we're validating things with, with text right now, because I haven't read all the spiritual texts. I've read, I know a lot about, I've studied Kabbalah, Sanskrit. I've, I've gone through and studied the Rosicrucian um Kabbalist I I've looked at all the the conspiracy stuff I grew up in that kind of family I grew up with that and I said all oh, that's bullshit I'm going to go into the science and real world of, of business and medicine and science and I did and it didn't work and now I'm back but instead of coming back and reading it I'm back experiencing it now all those those things that I read they lead they lead to inform me to a next step because I'm putting pieces together or we're putting pieces together and so Again, it's I, I, the journey for us is to to live it, and we we feel it starts with when we do the fascial maneuvers, it triggers something in the limbic system of the brain, and we have evidence of that now. It's a movement process that because it's using things like qigong and, and tai chi and reiki and all the energy thought processes, but we're focusing on fascia and we're restricting externally our fascia. And when our external fascia is restricted, when we breathe, the body has to accommodate the lungs. So the internal layers open up and it creates friction and then looseness on the inside fascia. And it also triggers the limbic system in the brain. And we know that we've seen this now enough because we put this, all these out for free, people can help themselves, is if they do that over the 28 day period, that's why the, the reset is there. It changes them as people because it wakes up the, the limbic system in the brain, it does something. And we don't know what it does, but we know everybody who does it for 28 days then starts to go through a transformation in their life. Some of them very quickly, some a little slower, but we've been watching this with 40 plus coaches who are everything from medical doctors to housewives and, and fitness coaches and stuff like that, therapists, all the way to thousands of people that have been reporting. And we're asking for like, not just how do you feel in your body? What's your emotions like? What's your sex life like? What's your relationships like? What's your work like? And we're getting all this feedback of data that's again, it's not, it's not, it's, it's anecdotal, but what we're doing is we're noticing the patterns. And so that's why it's the habituation. And the, the problem that, that I had with healthcare is we're in this world where we work, work, work. And then when it's broken, we go fix it. And as you know, you got out of the gym business and into the maintenance business, life maintenance, using life as your gym. And, but it's the habituation of stuff. And that's why we, that's why we said it. That's why the program, the best advice we can give to anybody who wants to learn more about this is start unrestricting their fascia for 28 days, drop that baseline stress. And then why 28? The human habituation cycle is 28 days. Our perception cycle is three days. That's why cycle is three days, like a 5150. And because if you're going psychotic, they just want to see three more days if, if that's okay. And by the way, it's 54 hours, it's the moon cycle. 
And mm -hmm. if an addiction hold is rehab is 28 days, because that's a habituation cycle of the human body. So there's no accidents why these things exist. We're just codifying it and using it now and saying that's why we're creating these behavior sets over three days. Just try the first three maneuvers. And as you know, they, they, they work. And then, try, and then if you do it for 28 days, your habituated stress pattern drops because our stress is not, is not incremental always. Our baseline stress is habit. Like I already know I have all these things that are going to stress me when I wake up. My body's had it every day for a year. So it knows it's, it's already ready for it. It's already preparing for that baseline. And so part of it is to bring our baseline stress down once or twice a day, every day for 28 days. Right. And then, and then you're, yeah, the whole field starts to Change. sync with that. Yeah. Guys, I have to hop off here in a couple okay. minutes. All right. Hey Rob, um, no. curiosity. You've been now fourth, uh, third or fourth day in. What's your experience with the uh, with the reset? And what are you what are you liking? And what's your body doing? Tell us a little bit on the last couple minutes we have. I mean, the more that I do it, the more I can feel. Uh, the more I can feel into it. it seems like I, I'm able to stretch, if that's the right word, into Perfect. the positions, and then. And then even the rest of the day, I can feel the structure of my body kind of changing shape and it feels like adjustments. It feels good. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have so many imbalances in my body. So this, this feels like it's going to be working back towards balance. Do you notice anything mentally or energy levels yet? Or I mean, I feel great. And it's hard for me to, I don't have a baseline day, you know, like I don't do the same thing every single day, okay. but yeah, I feel really good. Yeah. And I generally feel good, but I mean, I do. Feel you're, you're really nature, good. Dude, you're, you live that life. That's why I was wondering, because most people don't live your life. So the contrast for them is really large for you. It's just, this is more like a confirmation of what you're already doing. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. I mean, I definitely crave doing the practice. So that tells me that my body wants it, yeah. right? Like there's an internal desire yeah. to be doing it. And even I'm like, Hey, I should be doing more than these three, yeah. but yeah. I'm following the program right now. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's awesome. yeah, it, it's really good for if you follow it because I mean, your, your body's in a different position, but if you follow it and you have a, a marketable change, that means a lot because you're doing something that people aren't doing every day. You're living in this. Yeah. Right. Oh, I love it. You guys are doing good stuff. So. Um, well, we're, you know, honestly, I put that, we put that post up the other day. It's like, um, when, when you came in the human garage, I was still in the mindset of science and business and I'm unwinding into this esoteric. I, I thought, you know, these guys are crazy, you know, like, I, cause I, my mindset was, you know, uh, was yeah, meat clinical, suit. Meat clinical. Suit. yeah, it was like, for me, going in nature was once in a while. Yeah, and so, uh, and it's, it's crazy because here I am living the life that you're talking about, but it, but I, I found it my own way, but what you're doing is, and you're asking people to do is what changes. Them. It's not the knowledge. It's like live just live in the life. And you, you yeah. do, you embody that. And that's what I appreciate about That's what we appreciate about you so much. We're learning from you every day. So yeah, you, you got great content and it's awesome to watch. And it's also to watch the way you approach it. You have, you're, you're just funny as hell too. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's an experience. Teaching people is changing that whole, like sharing information is, I mean, teaching, I don't even really resonate with that word anymore, even though I've taught yeah, my yeah, entire yeah, life. You're right. You're right. Sharing. But it's something different. Like, so we, we, yeah, there's, there's something different happening in terms of how we transmit information. Yeah. And it's more just about experience. Like you're talking about, have the experience yeah. and then you get the realization yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consensus, Absolutely. consensus learning. Yeah. That's what, you know, it's basically what it is. It's, it's not learning by one, it's learning by groups, consensus learning. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is way more efficient. Yeah, it, it is. But, you know, in, in our traditional society, consens consensus doesn't work because we have a binary, we want a judgment, you know, and, and we're moving into the Aquarian age. We want something that's more consensus. We want consension, not judgment, 
And so it's that, happening. Yeah. It's happening, yeah. It, it ha it's happening with self first. So yeah, is all so this scary. important is so this, yeah. this, yeah, these experiences are so important even for ourself to do it. And then it just opens up pathways for more people to do it. And in 50 years or 20 years or five years, everyone's living like this and we remember back to these days when we weren't yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody always says you know my life i've always been on the leading edge of everything um you know if you want to listen to stories there's some crazy ones on the podcast and that but basically it's the entire life is always about about making a difference and moving from one point to another and that's what i thought it was about but really it's a, it's about experiencing and, and we're here to experience and in, and earth, you know, the old adage, if you spell earth and rearrange it, it says heart, it's the heart of it. It's we're here. This is the garden of Eden. We're the yeah. garden of Eden is some mystical place and we're just opening up to it right now. And, and you're leading the way. And so I appreciate that. Yes. Appreciate you guys as well. Okay. All right, guys. Nice hey, talking hey. to you all. It was nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hey, well, let's sync up to end it off. Yeah. Same thing, right under left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Head to the left, body to the right. Three, two, one. Two. Three. Nose. Two. Three. Want to retain everything that we uh, experienced here, so we want to be clear when we come in and clear when we go out. Awesome! All Thanks, right. guys. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, it's awesome. Later. Okay, bye. bye. Have a great day.